Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I'm kicking off another weekend reading vlog because apparently that's what I'm in the mood for, so I'm gonna just go with it. So this weekend is actually Dewey's 24-hour readathon. I'll link information about that below. And I had seen some friends who are gonna be participating in it, notably uh, Laura at the Book Bubbler, who I will link. And I was just really inspired to join in, except that it's actually happening on Saturday, which is the same day as the Social Distance Book Fest, which is a bunch of panels on YouTube with all sorts of different authors and lots of cool topics. So I knew that I wouldn't have very much time on Saturday to read because I want to attend all these panels. But Kazen at Always Doing, who I will also link below, put up a video saying that she was going to be doing an extended version of this, sort of a 24 hours in 72. Uh, so she and a couple of friends are going to be trying to read 24 hours worth of reading over the course of 72 hours. And I thought, that's brilliant. I want to do that. Um, there are so many books that I want to get read. And I just love the idea. And she said that she's going to be trying to read a thousand pages. And it's like, oh, a thousand pages, that'd be a good amount. So I am just interested in this. And I've decided that I'm going to basically do the same. And I'm just going to start now. So it is Thursday, April 23rd at around 6.30 p.m. And I'll just keep reading throughout this evening and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and wrap everything up on Sunday evening at around 6.30 p.m. So we will see. I'm not sure if I can get 24 hours read over the course of 72 hours, but I'm going to try because I love the idea of getting a thousand pages read and I have so many things that I want to read. So let me tell you about all the books that I want to read. Currently, I have nine books checked out on ebook from my library, and I kind of want to read all of them. So the ones that I'm currently in the middle of are Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which I am at 68% in. This is a middle grade that is all about kind of like magic based on color, and it's really, really fantastical. It is very Alice in Wonderland-like and has a lot of that kind of almost absurdly ridiculous uh, situations and different magic. So it reads very similar to what I remember Alice in Wonderland reading like. So I want to finish this. I also am in the middle of Halal If You Hear Me, which is edited by Fatima Asghar and it's part of the Breakbeat Poets collection. So this is a collection of poetry by a bunch of different Muslim femmes. Uh, I am 27% through it and I'm really enjoying it. It's super political, focused on identity. I just love that kind of poetry. I also am in the middle of Our Women on the Ground, edited by Zahra Hankir. This is a collection of essays by Arab women reporters on their experiences reporting in the Middle East. And I am 20% through that. It's very good so far. Next, I'm in the middle of A Place for Us by Fatima Farhir Mirza. This is a literary fiction, kind of a, a drama about an Indian American family uh, and some kind of issues that they have. I am 14% into this and I actually got this 14% about a month and a half ago and I just haven't picked it up since then, but I reborrowed the book so I can finish it. And then there's a bunch of other books that I want to start. So another book that is actually part of my March extended into April priority, which is Middle Eastern and Indian Reads Heritage, which is what all of these have been so far, is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, which is kind of like an epic fantasy inspired by Mughal India. So I've heard really, really good things about this, and I really want to get started on that. Uh, I'm trying to get all of these wrapped up by the end of this month, which is why this weekend is going to be such a great time for me to get some stuff read. And then I have another book that also fits into this category, but it wasn't on my TBR for the month, which is Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. This is a middle grade told in verse about a little girl who is a Syrian immigrant to the US. And I just love middle grade told in verse. I love immigrant stories and I can't wait to read that one too. Then I have a couple of books that are on my TBR because they are part of the Booktube SFF Awards shortlist. Uh, one is Gideon the Ninth, which I was convinced I would not get a copy of before the end of the reading period. But since the reading period was extended to the end of May and my library gave me one of like the lucky copies, so I get it for two weeks instead of three, which is awesome. I get to read that. 
Also, The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle, which is a short little novella about immigration tests. So that's going to be interesting, too. And then I have one other book that's checked out, but I actually do own a physical copy. So if I don't get around to reading the ebook copy, that's totally fine. I'll read my physical copy. I just like ebook copies because they're a little easier to hold in my hand because I read on my phone, which is A Mixture of Mischief by Anna Mariano. And this has been so highly anticipated by me. I think I mention it every time I talk about books that I want to read. So I kind of just want to start it. Um, but I, I do want to also make progress on all of those books that are for my March and now into April TBR because April's about to end and I have read uh, almost none of them. So even though I've started them, I haven't finished them. So these are my plans for the weekend. I am going to keep track of how much time I read and how many pages I read. And we'll see on Sunday evening how many hours I actually end up reading and how many pages. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, vlogging just apparently makes me really motivated to get in a lot of hours of reading and that's what I want. So we'll see how it goes. And I hope that you guys enjoy just kind of the low key atmosphere of joining me on my reading and the kind of daily relaxed lifestyle that Sush and I lead. I will check in with you guys uh, when I have something else to say. Okay, so now it is Friday, April 24th in the morning around 8 a.m. And I am about to start my day. So first, let me check in with you about last night. So I got in about two and a half hours reading total. I was able to finish Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which I actually really enjoyed. It has a very, very stylized way of writing. So it's really does remind me of Alice in Wonderland, but wow, the world building is so fantastic. The magic and the atmosphere of it are just really amazing. They're very, very beautiful, very vivid, and just really fantastical. Um, I also just really liked the way that the characters kind of went through the different parts of this furthermore world and the way that they kind of developed as people. And I always love middle grade that tackles kind of personal growth issues. So that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, and I, th I think I'll go ahead and continue on to the next book in the series, Witchwood. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get to it this weekend, but I've borrowed it from my library. So who knows, I might. Uh, the other books that I picked up yesterday, I read a little bit of Halal If You Hear Me, which is the um, Muslim women and non-binary and queer and trans uh, poets collection. Uh, and I really do like so many things in this collection. It's not like every poem is speaking to me, but the ones that do are really cool. And just this kind of all of these emotions and frustrations and kind of love of their home, their culture. There's so many really great things in there. And you just, I think poetry is something that really connects you to the emotions that people feel. Um, and then I also read, I started a new middle grade called Other Words for Home, which is in verse and it's about a a seventh grade girl who, with her mother, comes to the U.S. because there is 
a bunch of political unrest in their home in Syria, although her father and brother stay there. I'm loving this story so far. One, I just love middle grade. I love middle grade in verse. I love immigrant stories. Um, but it also is just really well written. I really like the flow of the verse. It's not like overly poetic, but it's just so immersive, right? And I just love that feel. And I love the kind of way that you get that first person emotional experience of immigration. And especially, you know, for somebody who is getting that perspective of her when she was in Syria, when she was home and how much she loved her life there. Um, and then coming to the US and really struggling to adapt to certain things. It's just very beautiful. I love the story so far. Uh, so for today, my plan is to first have breakfast and go for a morning walk. And then we'll see what the day holds. I have a couple of other things planned, but mostly I should be able to focus on reading today. Uh, and I really don't know which books I'm gonna pick up. It'll just depend on whatever I feel like, but I will take some clips and share my day with you.
it's now Saturday morning and I wanted to check in again. Yesterday was a fun day, although I didn't necessarily get as much reading in as I had hoped. We are now basically halfway through my 72 hour reading period and I have read for about six hours. So by my calculations, that is not half of 24. Um, and yeah, so we'll see how many hours I actually end up reading by the end of this. However, also by my calculations, it looks like I've read about 700 pages so far. So that's pretty good. 700 pages is not bad, especially a lot of those pages are middle grade or poetry or things like that that do tend to not be as dense on the page, but you know, some of it's been nonfiction, so I'm gonna count it. Um, but yeah, I've actually made a lot of progress in terms of finishing books. So yesterday I read a couple of things. I read a little bit more of Our Women on the Ground, which is the essays about Arab women journalists. and. That's so good. It's so good. I really like the different perspectives. Each journalist has a very different kind of experience. And just hearing a lot of their experiences with, you know, how they would talk to different um, contacts and how that changed over time. A lot of those contacts became like more radicalized and things like that. That was very interesting. Or, for example, there was a journalist who was. Um, working a lot kind of from the American side, like following a lot of the American soldiers and things like that, and just watching how much miscommunication and misunderstanding there was and how difficult um, the situation was with all of these soldiers coming from the U.S. not really knowing anything and just kind of the level of lack of planning, I guess, um, on the U.S. military's part in a lot of the kind of like war in Iraq, that sort of thing. So it was very interesting. Uh, and I definitely want to read more of these. I'm, I'm really enjoying them. Then I read The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle, which is a novella about an immigration test. Um, about an immigrant, I think from Syria, uh, coming to Great Britain and trying to take an immigration test. And it's kind of a dystopian type of deal. So this is something that was nominated for the Booktube SFF Awards for the short fiction. And I went into this thinking that I'd probably like it because Sush liked it. And also uh, Jade at Bedtime Bookworm liked it. And also um, Shelby at Read and Find Out liked it. So I went into this kind of thinking that I would like it. And I did not. I did not like this book uh, pretty much at all. I liked the themes. So the themes that it touched on were really good. I really liked a lot that it had to say about kind of the way that we test for immigration, the way that we test for belonging to a society. Um, a lot of these questions of what do we care about when trying to evaluate if somebody should join our society, these sorts of things were very good. But the writing itself, I hated. I actually really hated. Um, it was so fast paced. And it was so, I don't know, it was something where the author wanted you to feel so much anxiety and it just felt so manipulative in that way where you're being forced along for this fast paced ride and I just was not, I wanted to get off the ride. I was like, this is not my style. I don't like this. Slow down. What? Oh, are we having another awful event and you're trying to pull my anxiety and heartstrings and whatever? Yeah. So I just really didn't like that. And I didn't like a lot of the, the details of the story either. So I'll wrap that up once I have a chance to think more carefully about it. But I just really didn't like the writing. Um, and I really didn't enjoy the, the experience of reading it. So yeah, that was not, that was not a success for me. Anyway, um, so the other books that I read some of yesterday were Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. I decided to start that. I just felt in the mood. Um, I'm always a little bit amused by my inclination to start books rather than finish books. So did I have like four other books that I was already in the middle of? Yes. And I was like, you know, I'm going to start a new one. Uh, so anyway, but I, I, I don't regret it because it was really, really good. I read like maybe 10% of Empire of Sand last night and it was so, so good. I loved, I loved everything about it, actually. Um, I loved the world building. I loved this inspiration from Mughal India. I loved the kind of 
mythology and the the magic system i loved the culture i loved the characters i love the fact that this passes the bechdel test that you have women who are named characters in a scene talking about something that's not a man and basically the entire like t first 10 percent passes that almost every character we meet is a woman and you have women of all ages you have like a nine-year-old you have your main character who is i don't know 20 something like that you have her stepmother who is i don't know maybe like 35 45 something like that and you have a close friend who is an older woman so maybe like 50s and each of them has conversations that is about important things to them about magic about family about power about politics about religion about culture about heritage i mean it's just the greatest themes and uh, the world building is so great and i love the characters and i just i really like it and i like also that you know, we have in here some characters that don't like each other, um, but from the reader's perspective, I feel like there's a lot of understanding of the perspectives of the different characters. Even if you can see why they don't like each other, you can also understand what their motives are and why what they're doing makes sense to them and why they think that that's the way to do things. And it's just really awesome. So I'm so into this book so far. Um, I'm, I'm really liking it and I'm definitely going to read more. Uh, so then the other book that I read before going to sleep, cause I wanted something like, I want something gentle right before I go to sleep. Uh, middle grade is perfect for that. So I picked up other words for home, uh, by Jasmine Warga. And that is something that I got halfway through the other day. And last night I finished, it was so good. It was so, so good. I loved this. I have to do a standalone review of this cause it's just so good. Um, but it's just about this little girl and her mom. Uh, who live in Syria, but after things get a little dangerous there with all of the political unrest, they leave Syria to join um, her mom's brother in the U.S. And it's all about her experiences kind of dealing with that transition, adapting to her life in the U.S., but not losing her connection to Syria, about, you know, retaining her culture and her values while also adapting to the culture and values of the US and the lifestyle and just so much of it is so beautiful. I so loved this book. It's gorgeous. I think I'm on a real big middle grade kick right now and I just I just want to read more middle grade. This was so good. Um, so I'll have more coherent thoughts once I like sit down and like actually think about it um, and do a review. But suffice to say, I love this book. I really, really loved it. I loved all the themes. I loved the characters. And, you know, for me, you can't go wrong when you take a character who is a young girl, she's in seventh grade, and she is just totally, like, she knows what she wants. I love that. I love that so much. Okay, so those are the books that I read yesterday. Um, and other than that, I've been taking a lot of clips of uh, cooking. Um, Joe from Final Blow Joe, I'll link him below. He mentioned on my last vlog that he loves seeing the food that we were making. And so I'm like, I'm going to take more clips. Also, I don't know about you guys, but has cooking and baking become like a big hobby during the whole quarantine thing? Yes, it has. So I baked homemade bread using a no-knead recipe for the first time last week. And so we had some, we had a couple, a little bit of the loaf left over. And so like, oh man, we had um, some grilled cheese sandwiches with that. It is awesome. I'm definitely going to have to get more into bread baking because it's just, I really like the bread and so she was in love with the bread. So, uh, so we did that. Oh, and then we made homemade mac and cheese for the first time. That was really cool. I am definitely a fan. So we'll see what else the weekend holds in terms of baking, cooking, etc. We have lots of leftovers too. So we'll probably have some of those. And, oh, and then today the plan basically is I'll get in some reading but the main thing today is the uh, social distance book fest which is all of the different panels on youtube about all sorts of different things i'm super excited about a bunch of them there's like a diversifying romance one that has talia hibbert in it so excited about that one i really love uh get a life chloe brown which is talia hibbert's um recent ish book she has another one coming out soon and also uh, jocelyn at yogi with a book is hosting a panel on middle grade and yeah I'm in the middle grade right now so I'm definitely watching that so I will check in with you guys throughout the day um show you what I'm up to we'll see how much reading I get done but 
uh, I kind of want to read all the things as well as watch all the things, so it'll be fun. Okay, so it is Sunday morning now, and I wanted to catch you guys up on what I've been up to. So yesterday was a ton of fun. Most of my day was spent simply enjoying the Social Distance Book Fest. I had such a great time. If you guys were also at the Book Fest, let me know down below which panels you guys went to, what you thought of them, what you enjoyed. If you didn't get a chance to go, I'll link the playlist down below. All of the panels should be available for you to watch afterwards. I only managed to catch five of them in person, but I definitely want to go and watch a bunch of them afterwards um, because they were just so great. The ones I caught, I loved. They were such excellent discussions of so many topics. I really liked the way that the panels were set up. I mean, they were set up for real discussion of issues within each genre. I, I adored it. I especially loved 
um, Brie at Brie Hill hosted one about diversifying romance that was just such an excellent discussion. And then also Jocelyn at Yogi with a Book hosted one on middle grade that was so good. I will link both of those specifically below, but all of the panels will be linked on that playlist. So yeah, it was just so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I love the comments too. There were so many people who I would see in the comments section on one panel and then I'd go to the next panel and they'd be there too. And it was just really, really fun. So that was a great treat, um, but it did take up most of my day. So other than that uh, and having meals, the only other things I really did yesterday were uh, Sush and I are working on a puzzle right now. So we worked on that a little bit in the afternoon and then we decided to bake some cookies so uh, in the late afternoon, I worked on making the cookie dough and Sush read to me from The Twisted Ones by T. King Fisher, which is the book that currently we're working on together. He had so much fun reading to me from the Catherine Arden middle grade horror books, uh, Small Spaces and Dead Voices, that he's like, let me read you The Twisted Ones by T. King Fisher, because he knows I like T. King Fisher, but I didn't want to... I, you know, I was a little hesitant about reading this new horror book by her, but he, he thought I would like it and I'm definitely liking it. We're at like 70% 70, 70 so far and I'm definitely enjoying it. So it's really good. And other than that, the only other thing that I have read, I just read a little bit more of Our Women on the Ground, which is the nonfiction essays by Arab women journalists. So here's hoping that today I get in a bit more reading. Currently I'm at something just over eight hours of reading total <laughs> and like 750 pages of books. So I haven't made much progress since the day before, but today, today I plan to read. Um, so I have until 6.30 PM today for my 72 hours and I'm hoping to get in at least a number of hours of reading. Um, but I know I'll probably work on a couple of other things. I want to film some videos and maybe edit and I'm sure there's I'll spend time with Sush playing around. So I will check in with you at the end of today and we'll see what I end up doing. Okay, so it is now Sunday evening, just around 6 p.m. So I'm right at about that 72 hour mark. Um, I have really enjoyed this readathon, even though I did not quite make the 24 hours I was aiming for, I ended up reading for 12 hours, so half. Even so, I did get quite a large number of pages read. I read 959 pages, which is pretty good. My goal was a thousand, so just shy of that. And given that I only read for half the amount of time that I was planning on, not bad. Uh, I really was pleased with the amount of progress that I made. So this morning I was a little bit busy doing some videos for booktube, uh, but in the afternoon I actually made some progress. So I read a little bit of A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, which is a book that I haven't touched in a month or so since I started it. And it's very, very good. So I'm glad that I picked it up. It's, you know, this family drama and it's so much of it is really about the complexities of relationships and families, especially between siblings and their parents when there's a lot of 
difficult emotions in the family, difficult personalities. Um, and I really like the way that the sibling relationships are explored and the way that there's strife in between them and their parents, but also love and a desire to connect. So I'm really enjoying that book and I definitely do want to finish it. The other book that I read today after lunch is um, Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, which I am loving. I'm almost halfway through it and it is so, so good. Not only is just the magic system and the world building so fascinating, but I really like a lot of the issues that it is kind of covering. So things like there's a lot in here about colorism, a lot about kind of cultural values and a lot about this idea of imperial culture versus the culture of the people who are oppressed. There's a lot in here that's political, a lot talking about culture and heritage and religion and so many different things that I think are really, really fascinating themes. So I'm getting so much out of it. I also really like the main character. Um, she's a very strong woman and a very strong woman who is trying to deal with a very difficult political situation and make the best choices that she can while also being young and in many ways naive. She makes a couple of choices that I think are a little foolish in the beginning, but she really is trying very hard. And I really like the people who are around her in that there's lots of people who aren't as great, but there's also a lot of good people and all of them are explored in their complexity. I really like that. Even the people who aren't so great, you somewhat understand who they are and why they're making those decisions. So. I very much am enjoying this book too, and I definitely want to finish it. Other than that, today we just, um, we had lunch and, oh, we played a little bit of a computer game in the afternoon. Sush recently got me a game called Samarost 3, which is by the same game makers um, that made Machinarium, which we played a few years ago and really, really, really loved. So this came out and he got it for me recently. It's a puzzle game uh, with just absolutely fantastic artwork and beautiful music music and it's just so much fun to work through the puzzles together so we always play together um, kind of generally I you know move the mouse and click on things and discuss with Sush and we're kind of trying to brainstorm how to solve the puzzles it's so much fun I really recommend this if you like puzzle games so yeah it's been a wonderful weekend I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching my attempt <laughs> to do a 24 and 72 I do not know how people do 24 and 48 that is crazy to me. I achieved 12 out of 72. And I think that like, I felt like I was reading a fair chunk, although I was, you know, I did have a couple of other things I was working on. So yeah, it was a really fun experience. And I'm really glad that I made so much progress. I finished three books and I made good progress in a bunch of others that I've been really wanting to read and that I really want to finish by the end of this month. So now I'm really hopeful that I can. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts, any comments, if you've read any of the books that I've talked about, if you have any suggestions, any recommendations, anything at all, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I'd really like to hear from you.